Tuesday we're going to reconvene. Our next committee is Parks and Recreation, and Michael Lilliquist is the chair. Thank you, Pinky. Joining me on the Parks and Recreation Committee are Council, Council Members Barker and Murphy, and we have one item before us today. That's a resolution to establish the fees for the use of city parks and recreation facilities. And according with our municipal code, section 8.04.030C, it's us, the City Council, who establishes the parks and recreation facility fees via resolution. These fees were last modified in 2013. Um, we're going to have presented fee proposals for us starting next year. And as I understand it, these fees are not anticipated to significantly increase revenue. They're more in the line of small adjustments. Uh, Parks Director Bryson. Thank you, Leslie Bryson, Parks and Recreation Director. And with me today is Dick Henry, our Recreation Manager. Since we haven't looked at fees since 2013, uh, Dick spent a significant amount of time this year looking at our fees uh, for our facilities, facility rentals, um, looking at uh, how many people each facility accommodates, which kind of use that we get in those facilities, and adjusting the fees. Um, some are going up slightly, some are staying about the same, so we don't anticipate revenue increasing greatly, but making some changes so it's, um, kind of streamlines, makes things a little more consistent across the board, and uh, looked at what other agencies charge for similar types of facilities. So I'll let Dick explain a little bit more about the some of the more significant changes that are being made. Well, I'm glad to be here, and I, I would like to uh, say that this is the most in-depth we've went through as far as looking at the fees ever. And um, we looked at other cities, we looked at every reservation we had in every facility for 2015 for that year. We looked at the length of the reservation, um, how many we had by length, we looked at all the fees um, and the uses and it was, it was actually pretty interesting to see that a couple of our smaller facilities aren't being used that much. So we tried to take a look at the market value of each facility, the amenities we found out that um, some of our shelters that we had said could accommodate certain number of people didn't really accommodate that many people um, because of the structure of the facility that wouldn't fit in there. So um, we took a look at that. We look at, took a look at some of our procedures and policies like refunds. So one of the things we decided to do uh, or to propose is to have a $20 fee for and a five business day cancellation for um, refunds. And an example of that that could happen is somebody could have made a reservation, called us at three o'clock on Friday for a Saturday reservation, canceled, got their refund and still used the facility because nobody else could have reserved it and it would have cost us to do the refund. We don't know that that's happened. Um, we also propose going from a two hour to a three hour uh, minimum in our facilities because of uh, uh, many of the reservations ran over the two hours. They couldn't get their whole reservation in. Three hours seems to, to work. Um, we also put an hour in between for our staff to be able to do cleaning. So some of those kind of policies we, we kind of changed. So starting with the pool, the only one we found when we did market research and we looked at our costs for actually holding a reservation that we found that we were a, a bit under was the whole facility rental with the 100 to two or one to 200 swimmers. And so we raised that fee, you know, $75 just because, um, you know, we weren't really, it was costing us more to actually put, put that rental on. Um, stepping down to athletic field fees, we made a, a few changes there, particularly at Civic Field. Um, we used to have a per game cost and we charged per game for everything, um, but we found out that like a high school football game takes a lot longer than a boys and girls club football game. So we went to a non-admission per hour charge um, for that as well as an, an admission charged. Um, so if somebody's charged an admission, generally we have to pick up garbage a lot more because they have concessions and different things like that. There's more co cost to hold, holding their, um, their event. So that ends up being, uh, we propose it uh, two times a, a non-admission for that rate and that pretty well pays our costs for that facility. I wanted to mention something about the lights. You'll see a practice and a game charge. The reason for that is if you have a game, the lights at Civic have two settings. One is a reduced light setting, which is much cheaper than if we have a game, we have to have more light because they got to see the ball, um, especially in football games and those kinds of things. Um, Bill Martins is pretty much remaining the same. Um, it's still a per game fee. 
Um, and then our other fields are pretty, pretty much the same um, as what we had um, before. We did raise the softball prep fee just a little bit for our games for adults because we have to drag the field and do some things that cost a little bit more money now than they used to. Um, then we looked at our facility rental fees for all of our shelters, um, our indoor facilities, and then our special park facilities. And on those we get people who request special events. And so before we haven't charged them anything to process that special event fee. Um, so for anything that's happening within the park, um, a, a specific park and doesn't overflow the park because now if it does that, it'll fall into the city's special request fee. But um, we we're charging a $50 fee just to cover our costs for the person that has to kind of run down all that um, to, to make sure that whatever event is gonna fit within the park and how is it gonna affect the users and those kinds of things. Um, we also have a commercial fee, so rather than a non-admission admission fee, if you're gonna charge money for, for your event for entrance to it or you're soliciting monetary funds, if you're getting cans of food, you don't fit into the commercial rate. Um, so we're charging one and a half times our regular rates that we have listed here. Um, to do that in the past we've had it's been a little confusing so we've also tried to structure it so it's easier to answer questions so if somebody had a, a special request um, they paid twice as much um, unless they had a 501c then we had to collect the 501c and give them a reduction so we've changed that whole thing to where anybody who's soliciting funds will basically pay that 501c charge or the one and a half times what this, these regular charges are. So um, makes it a lot less complicated for sure. Um, the, when you look at the day fee proposed, that's a 10 hour fee. So if you go 11 hours, you're still, the most you're gonna pay is for the 10 hours. Um, the fees really haven't changed much as far as the shelters, the only one we've increased uh, a little bit more was the Squ uh, Squalicum Creek Park shelter because it's the nuts deluxe of shelters. <laughs> I mean, it's got everything. So it's a little more than everything else. All the other fees break down by size of facility and who they can serve. So there's just really two smaller shelters that are $20. Um, looking at the indoor facilities, the fees are pretty much the same except for Maritime Heritage Park. Um, we have a fee now for that and for the amphitheater. However, uh, which we haven't had before. However, because we're activating the park, we do partner with most everybody. So if somebody was gonna have, um, let's say a yoga class that was gonna be teaching lessons and charging a fee, but it was a private business and we were gonna allow them to use that, then that, this is the fee they would pay. Um, otherwise, most of those folks down there were, in fact, right now only one are we charging a fee for. Everybody else we're partnering with to try to get more activity down at Maritime. Um, the other uh, one that we've changed a little bit is Woodstock Farm. Um, this year we took in about uh, $70,000 in different rentals there. So what we've done, but we didn't have very many rentals, in fact, hardly any in, in May or in October. And we did have in April and in November. And the reason is that was our prime season, but it isn't the prime season for the people that want to use it. So we we're proposing changing the prime season to June through September. Um, and I think we'll see a lot more reservations in May um, through, uh, or May and um, October. Um, the other thing we did, we proposed a $200 increase on the all day rate. Um, if we have the same number of reservations this year, uh, or in 2017 as we had this year, we will see about an eight to $9,000 increase in revenue at Woodstock Farm. Um, we do also, and, and when we, compared to other cities, most of them don't rent their uh, open spaces. So we do reserve open space for folks, mostly it's for you know, family gatherings or whatever where they can actually center there or we actually give reservations for trails, which is a, most of them for runs, bicycle events, those kinds of things. So we do have a $20 per hour fee for that. That is not a change, but it's just something to note. I think that is the summary. Okay, Dick, that's very thorough. And I would note that these uh, fee proposals went before the Parks and Rec Board already. That's correct. Committee members, Roxanne. I just move that we establish a fee for the use of city parks and recreation facilities. We have a motion to approve the resolution. Any further discussion? April. 
Well, I want to thank you. I know you've been pursuing this for a while, and thanks to Leslie for bringing it forward to council. I know it, it does take a lot of work, but it's been necessary. Um, the help me remember that when you brought it forward to Parks, somebody had a very interesting, or sorry, Parks and Rec um, board. They had an interesting suggestion on cancellations so that it would open up somebody else to be able to get the reservation. Did you make that change in this? We didn't. Um, we did consider it, and I talked to staff at the front desk that um, that uh, schedule all of these, and they felt like if we made that kind of change for a couple of things, one is it complicates because all of our other refunds were going to be, um, you know, five days, um, like other athletic fields. It's a little more complicated between the athletic fields and that. They'd like to have one rule that works for everything. We're also taking a look at that rule for our uh, registration system um, at the pool and at, at our office. So we thought that that by having one rule that would work that way. We also looked at last minute res reservations and we're just not getting last minute reservations. People plan farther ahead than that. Um, one more. Go ahead, April. I, I, I would like to commend uh, the effort in getting uh, a broad, I think, depth and uh, membership on the Parks Board. I've really enjoyed the meetings. It's transformed since I think we started, and a lot of people coming with a lot of different views, pointing out a lot of different things, and it's, it's a pleasure to be part of that committee. Yeah, and some younger members, which hasn't always been the case. Anybody else? Could, okay. could I say one more thing? Sure, Dick. Go ahead. One thing I forgot to say is that we're looking at, and we haven't done this in the past on a regular basis, but we're looking at reviewing these every two years with the budget cycle. So, okay. Good and just want to point out too that if uh, you approve these today, these will take effect January 1st. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Committee members, all in favor of uh, recommending approval of this ordinance tonight, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We'll bring that forward with positive recommendation tonight. That's the end.